In this video, you're going to learn how to do polynomial long division using the box method. So there's different methods to do polynomial long division. I demonstrate them in some of my other videos where it's just like how you learn how to divide numbers back you know, in elementary school. But this method is a different way that I recently was introduced to through one of my students because their teacher insisted that they do it this way. So I want to share it with you here in this video. And the key here is you want to set up this as a box. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, backstory behind this as well as we're going to go through four examples so you can get some experience and practice with it. So what you do is you say I'm dividing by x plus 2. We're going to put x and positive 2 right here along one side of the box. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're trying to get this quantity here inside the box to be equal to 3x cubed plus 11x squared plus 11x plus 2. So what we do is we start off with uh, this first quantity here, 3x cubed, this first term, and we say what times x equals 3x cubed? That's 3x squared. Then we distribute 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. That matches. 3x squared times 2 gives us 6x squared. Okay, And now we look at our polynomial here and we say, well, I have 11x squared. This is 6x squared. That means I need an additional... 5x squared. Now we've got our 11x squared. So I say what times x gives me 5x squared? That's going to be 5x. So I distribute 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times 2 is 10x. But you can see here I have 11x. That means that I need another x, right? 1x plus 10x is 11x. What times x is x? That's going to be positive 1. 1 times x is x. 1 times 2 is 2. And there's our 2 right there. And you can see now, this is our quotient. This is our answer, 3x squared plus 5x plus 1. It's basically just like finding the area of a rectangle. You take the length times the width equals the area, right? Or base times height equals the area. But now what we're doing is we're kind of working backwards. It's like we've got the area, and maybe we have the width, but we don't have the length, you see. Make another analogy. Like say if you had uh, what's 24 divided by 6. Well, we know that that's 4, right? Because 4 times 6 is 24, 0 remainder. If we want to get back to the 24, we say, oh, 4 times 6 is 24. See, this times this. So this is our quotient. Now, what happens when you have a remainder? What do you do in that situation? Let's look at that situation next. Okay, example number 2 now. We've got this fraction here, which remember, when you see this fraction bar, this is really like a division sign. So we have the numerator being divided by the denominator. And so we're going to do the polynomial long division using the box method. We're going to take this quantity that we're uh, dividing into the polynomial. We're going to put it on the side of our box here. So 2x and negative 3. And we're going to start with this highest power term, this uh, leading term, 10x cubed. And we're going to say what times 2x equals 10x cubed? That's going to be 5x squared. Then we're going to distribute. That gives us the 10x cubed. 5x squared times negative 3 gives us negative 15x squared. Okay, now when we look at our polynomial here, we've got negative 23x squared. Here we only have negative 15x squared. That means we need another negative 8x squared. So what times 2x equals negative 8x squared? That's negative 4x. We distribute. That gives us a negative 8x squared. Negative 4x times negative 3x gives us a positive 12x. Well, we have 16x. That means we need another 4x. See, there's our 16x. So now we say, what times 2x is 4x? So that's just going to be 2. If I distribute, I get the 4x. 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6. And now we say, well, we have negative 9 here. This is negative 6. That means we need another negative 3. But we've already reached the end of the line here. This is a constant. We really can't go lower than a constant. And so we've already gone in descending order. So what do we do with this negative 3? Well, we take the negative 3 and we put it over the divisor, what we're dividing by. That's 2x minus 3. Now you can write this as plus a negative 3 over 2x minus 3, or you could just write this as minus 3 over 2x minus 3. And this is going to be your quotient. Now if you wanted to check your work, you take 2x minus 3 and multiply it by this, and you're going to get the this quantity here, which represents like our area. Now, to make an analogy, say if you had how many times does 6 go into 25? So previously we had 24, right? So 
4 times 6 is 24, remainder 1. So you can see you're taking this quantity here times 2x minus 3 gives you this area, but then we have to add on this negative 3. Same thing here, 4 times 6 is 24, then we have to add on this remainder here 1 to get back to the 25. Okay. The other way to look at it is when you multiply these together, you're going to get this area. When you multiply 2x minus 3 times this fraction, the 2x minus 3's are going to cancel. Numerator and denominator are going to be left with that negative 3. So we're getting this polynomial back. Let's take a look at another example. This is an interesting one here. We've got this polynomial <clears throat> divided by x squared plus 3. Notice we've got a quadratic term, a constant term, but no x to the first term, no linear term. So it's almost like there's a term missing there. But we're going to take this x squared plus 3, put it along this side of the box, and we're going to try to get this polynomial back here. So we're going to start with our highest power term, which is 2x to the fourth. And we're going to say what times x squared equals 2x to the fourth. That's 2x squared. Now when we distribute, we get 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times 3 is 6x squared. But working our way down in descending order here, you can see we've got a negative x cubed. Let's put a negative x cubed here. What times x squared is negative x cubed? That's negative x. When we distribute, we get back the negative x cubed. We get negative 3x. Okay, now we have 11x squared. Here we have 6x squared. So we need an additional 5x squared. Okay, so that's our 11x squared. What times x squared is 5x squared? That's going to be... 5, distribute, that's 5x squared, 5 times 3 gives us 15, but we need to get uh, 19, so we need an additional 4 here, okay? So when we write our final answer, it's going to be this plus 4 over our divisor, which is x squared plus 3, and that's our quotient, that's our answer. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number four, this is an interesting one because we're dividing by a trinomial this time, three terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to take what we're dividing by, put it along this side of the box here, so x squared minus 2x plus 5. And so you can see we've got three rows here now. And we're going to take that highest power term, let's put it up in the upper left-hand corner. What times x squared equals 3x to the fourth? That's going to be 3x squared. Now if I distribute, I get 3x to the fourth, I get negative 6x cubed, and I get 15x squared. Okay, now I want negative 4x cubed. I already have a negative 6x cubed, so I'm going to add 2x cubed so that this adds up to the negative 4x cubed. But what times x squared is 2x cubed? That's going to be 2x. When I distribute, I get the 2x cubed. I get negative 4x squared, and I get 10x. Okay, now, let's see. We've got 15x squared plus negative 4x squared. That's 11x squared. I need 12x squared, so I need another 1x squared here. So what times x squared is 1x squared? That's going to be 1. If I distribute, I get negative 2x. I get 1 times 5 is 5, okay, and now let's look what we have here. So, so this, you can diagonal here, you can see added up to the 12x squared. Now we want 8x, but 10x minus 2x, oh, that is 8x, that's great, okay. And then we've got uh, 5, but we want 3, so that means we have a remainder here of uh, negative 2. 5 plus negative 2 gives us back the 3. So our final result is going to be this minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 5. You just put the remainder over the divisor, which you're dividing by, and that's your final result. So let me know in the comments below what is your preferred method of dividing polynomials. And if you want to see another way of doing this besides the box method, follow me over to that video right there where I demonstrate polynomial long division. I'll see you in that video.